everyone and welcome to Around the Region. Coming up tonight, we've got a great show including your complete Halloween guide for your pets. As well, we join communities in our area as they walk to remember missing and murdered Aboriginal women and girls in our country. And tonight we start off with a story of two survivors and how they're helping to raise awareness right here in our communities for brain injuries. The Brain Injury Association of Canada estimates that thousands of Canadians suffer a traumatic brain injury each year. Effects will range from not being able to remember names or faces to paralysis. Here in the border city, the Lloydminster and Area Brain Injury Society works with survivors of brain injuries and helps with treatment and rehabilitation. The thing about brain injury is that it's not... Um there's no, you're not predisposed to it. There's no genetic markers for brain injury like there may be for cancer or diabetes. Brain injury can happen to anyone at any age, any gender, any race, anything at any time. Curtis Anderson knows just how long and difficult the road to recovery can be. Ten years ago, he suffered severe head trauma while competing in a bull riding competition, resulting in left side paralysis. You don't think that'll happen, but there's a, an old cowboy said, in bull riding, it's not if you get hurt, it's when and how bad. He now spends his time speaking with community groups and working to support brain injury awareness. Very important to me and my family. It just lets people know that brain injury is out there and affects a lot of people and affects a lot of family. And it just to get brain injury on the map to, so people recognize it or know that it's out there, it's really good because a lot of places that I've spoke, there's been people that come up to me and either there's someone in their family with a brain injury or they know someone. And I've been able to give everyone a business card so maybe my speech might help them down the road. And it's pretty good when people come up and talk to you after you speak. And Curtis's story is inspiring people all across the province, especially those going through their own recoveries. One survivor said hearing my speech was a motivation for them to keep going in their therapy and it doesn't get better than that to hear a comment like that. I spoke eight times in June, a couple times in July and six times in August and a few times in September. It's getting busier and busier and it's just and then I'm putting a book out this fall. It's gonna be called Road to Recovery and it's gonna be in every UFA store. So that'll help raise awareness more and more. Every year in May, Curtis hosts the Courage Canada Trail Ride in our region to help support local brain injury agencies. In the past two years, we raised 42,900. This year, we had 101 riders on horseback, 12 teams, 74 riders on the wagons, 250 for supper, and we raised 19,200. Troy Adams is another brain injury survivor. At the age of 16, a car accident left him with brain damage and suffering from OCD, depression, and anger problems. And like Curtis, he's turned his tragedy around, and this past April, he started his Cross Canada run to raise money and awareness for brain injuries. It took me about seven years to really come to terms with my brain injury, and um, I never really got ahead of the game until the last, within these last two years, and that's also when I started running. Um, coincidentally, I wasn't a runner before, and I, I picked up running more so um, because I started realizing the, the mental benefits more so than I did the physical benefits. And um, that's kind of where this whole ran, run came from. It was, it was that simple. I started realizing the mental benefits, and then um, everything in my life started working its way back to norm, normal, you know, um, the, the old normal more or less, and it was something that I struggled with, like I said, for those seven years post-accident. And uh, so I, I decided to take it upon myself to um, make a change and uh, help uh, brain injury survivors uh, throughout Canada and North America, and that's exactly what I'm, I'm trying to do now, just get word out there that, uh, I guess, just have hope, you know, it does get better. Even though Troy is halfway to his goal of raising $100,000, he says the awareness he's raising along the way is even more important. It's not about the money to me. Of course you need the money to be able to get into the schools, to be able to, to fund the education side of brain injury awareness. But I, uh, I, uh, I guess I just, I have hope that I can show people, you know, give them a reason to donate. And that's what I think it all comes down to. And the more that, uh, you know, we get into the schools, like we're in Bonneville uh, next week, the more that we get into the schools, that money's just going to come. 
over time because our goal is not to sit here and tell you that we're going to stop brain injuries from happening. Sadly, a brain injury is an, is an accident. It's, a, it's an incident that is going to happen no matter what. They're out there. My goal is to limit the severity of injury, whether that's um, wearing a bike helmet, whether that's checking both ways when you cross the road. You know, whether it's like earlier today when I went over the handlebars of my bike, it seems so silly, but really, if I wasn't wearing a helmet, could you imagine, right? It, it just happens so fast. It's good to see other survivors or other people that want to raise awareness of brain injury too, and it's just going to help that much more to get out there and people will see it, see what it, how it affects others. That's my goal, to get out there and show people that... Uh, you know, I, I, I don't have it worse, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's a lot of people who've had it a lot worse than me. But I want to be on that uh, on the team that moves forward po in a positive way. Uh, and uh, that's what we're here for, for, to do today. I think it's really great to see stories like this where survivors are coming together to help others that are going through kind of the same thing that they went through themselves. And when ATR comes back, we take a look at the high rate of violence against Aboriginal women in our country and how our communities right here in the region are standing up against it.